very quickly on the three questions. Richard, thank you very much for your question. 11 million disabled people in this country. Half of all households living in poverty have at least one member of the family who is, uh, who is disabled. And there are many, because of the lack of care available, the lack of support available, many people have to give up work in order to care for those with disabilities or care for those going through a mental health crisis. Almost always it's women who lose out in career opportunities and jobs because they end up staying at home to care for people. Obviously, one wants to care for one's loved ones and wants to support them, but you also need a public system that means they can carry on with work and get the help and support that they need. And so uh, <clears throat> I absolutely take your point, um, Richard. And uh, the cuts in support for de disabled people's organisations is very severe. That means there's less representation. That means many go unrepresented at tribunal hearings and appeal hearings. And it means that many people end up in a very difficult, very lonely and very bad place where they end up taking their own lives because of the sanctions regime being imposed by the DWP on, on people claiming benefits. And uh, I urge anyone who hasn't to go and see I, Daniel Blake and try not to cry at the end of it when you realise the, outco the outcome of, that, um, uh, of the, the story of Daniel Blake in that. The question of mental health and um, parity of esteem is something I feel very, very strongly about. I've appointed someone to be at the Shadow Cabinet, a Shadow Secretary of State for Health and Mental Health, because if there's to be real parity of esteem, there has to be proper funding in it, and we have to stop the language of abuse against people going through a mental health crisis, and instead reach out and support them. A quarter of us are going to have a mental health problem during our lives. Yeah. It's what happens. Let's get over it, let's support people and not condemn them. But also look at the levels of stress that are created by poverty, by insecure housing, by zero hours contracts, by all those issues which does cause mental health problems and severe levels of stress in the end. And look how it eventually plays out into homelessness amongst many people. NHS privatisation, Diane and um, Dawn have made it absolutely clear we want our NHS to be, of course, properly funded, but we don't want it to be a source of profits for those that have put their money into uh, tax havens elsewhere. I want NHS staff to be recognised and employed by the NHS. And the stress that people are now going through with the sustainability and transformation plans and the danger that poses to a number of A&E departments all over the country. We all rely on our National Health Service as a human right. We're going to defend it as a human right, free at the point of use.